Welcome to Hampton United Church on this first Sunday of Lent, February 21st. We gather as a community of faith of Hampton United Church, and I'll begin with our announcements. This Sunday on the first Sunday of Lent, we'll be, we will be um, celebrating communion during this service. So if you are watching at home, please um, take a moment to get a drink and a piece of bread or a cracker or a biscuit so we can celebrate communion together. Here in the sanctuary, we have um, little snack packs <laughs> of bread and a grape, um, something to make um, the sacraments um, be brought to you in a safe and COVID friendly way. Um, and on behalf of all of us um, for the communion service, I will be pouring the cup. As we continue to gather in the season of Lent, there are many things that are happening. Um, we are going to be exploring the theme of holy vessels, a Lenten season of recovery. This has been a very difficult year, especially as we approach 12 months of living in, uh, in a global pandemic. So during this Lenten season, we're going to be experiencing what it means to be whole in body, mind, and spirit and how that perspective is shifted when things are broken. So our anchoring image is going to be shattered glass, like beach glass, as well as shattered tiles and pottery for that idea of a mosaic coming together to bring in a different picture after brokenness. On our caring connecting calls, which happen on Tuesdays at 10.30, we're going to deepen our awareness of being holy vessels and how we experience life and faith and how we're called into the world to offer abundance and grace to fill the lives of ourselves and others. All are invited to join us by Zoom on Thursdays at 1030 for those caring and connecting calls. Last Sunday, and we continue, uh, we continue to have Linton at home packages available. Um, you're welcome to pick one up after the service today, or if you would like one delivered, please, um, please connect with Kim by phone or email, and we can make sure that you can pick it up here or we can drop it off. It's an opportunity to have some personal devotion time as well as Linton challenges. This week, I've also found a 40-day Linton calendar for families. And if that's something that, that you would like, we're happy to send that out as well. I'll be posting it on um, our Facebook page this week. And I did not have um, time to get the, um, the items that we are suggesting you use to create blessing bags. I did not have time to get that to Kim before she sent out the announcements. So during Lent, one of our projects is to create blessing bags, which are items that people who are street entrenched and homeless in St. John could, could use. Um, so there'd be things like um, toothpaste, toothbrush, deodorant, um, throat lozenges, tissue, tissues, mask, hand sanitizer, as, as well as um, some, some food items. And um, we invite you to put them into a large Ziploc bag and bring them to the church on March 21st, which is the last Sunday of Lent. And then we will deliver them to Outflow Ministries um, in St. John that they can distribute to those in need. Also putting Lent in action as we reach out to others. We had a very successful Soup for the Soul fundraiser yesterday where all of the donations that were made for those delicious bowls of soup are going to the Hampton Food Basket. And we also highlighted last week in our service the work of Outflow Ministry in St. John. And Marion McLean um, created a team, Chili Bones and Warm Hearts, and invited members of Hampton United Church to contribute to that team for the coldest night of the year, a fundraiser and awareness raiser for, um, for those who are living on the streets and precariously housed. And the funds from that go to Outflow Ministry. So as we move into this Lenten season, consider the way that Lent um, will impact you, what these 40 days will be for you as you reflect on um, the brokenness that we've experienced as a global community, maybe ourselves and our relationships with our family and friends, our community and including our church community. Things have been very different this year. So how will God change us and our hearts during these 40 days of Lent? 
So as we begin with our theme of holy vessels, we gather as people around Jesus, as his reputation becomes known from town to town, we gather virtually or here physically, for we too are yearning for presence, for peace, for help. Each of us is created a precious and holy vessel of embodied love. We have been through a harrowing time since last Lent that has shattered our sense of wholeness in body, mind, and spirit. So like a glass vessel fractured into pieces, let us enter a Lenten season of recovery as we focus on Jesus, the healer of our every ill. Janet will share with us our prayer song for this Lenten season. We come to this time of worship seeking wholeness as beach glass is broken and tumbled by the sea it becomes a treasure we are god's treasure though we may be suffering or broken we come because we know that when pain enters our lives jesus reaches out to touch and remind us of the treasure we all are. We are worthy of new life in the midst of hopelessness. We come and worship God. We gather at the beginning of Lent and we hold as an anchoring image in the season of beach glass. It begins as something whole and yet discarded. And as it is tumbled by the sea, it is broken and polished until it becomes a treasured mineral gem. We do not embrace that suffering is necessary or that suffering is God given but the reality that suffering is a part of life. So when pain comes and brokenness enters our lives, Jesus reaches out to touch and remind us of the treasure that we are all worthy of new life in the midst of hopelessness. In a year when pandemic has wrecked havoc on our world, we begin by affirming our journey to physical health. So as we approach God in our worship today, we recognize that people opened their lives to Jesus. We are drawn to the healer, opening our hearts with honesty about our lives and finding assurance that offers peace. Let us pray. Lent developed into a season of intense inward reflection and confession centuries after the life of Jesus. Yet, as we will see, Jesus encouraged people to open up about their lives, to speak truth no matter how broken. This is the beginning of compassion for ourselves and others. This is the beginning of healing. We enter this Lenten season in a time of confession. The, Lent, the Latin origins of the word confess is to study and acknowledge. So this will be a season of studying how we can be a healing presence in our community. 
And to do this, we acknowledge our need to restore our own holy vessels. So we prepare our minds, our bodies, and our hearts for prayer. Creator God, we are bodies fashioned by your hand and your image, shapes and colors of diverse and immense beauty. And yet too often we have ignored the sacred nature of our physical lives. The holy vessels you have fashioned are tired and suffering, ravaged by months of disrupted rhythms and ailment. Our fragility has come into full view and God, we are frightened. We cannot fathom the proportions of loss and so we look away, sometimes even from our own needs. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. In this moment of silence, God, we sense and we acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Know this, God's love and grace surround us no matter what. We are precious and holy vessels right now. Christ's light is a treasure given freely for you, for me, for all. So we take a deep breath in to let this truth fill us. And we breathe out with the relief of assurance. The Christ light continues to light our way during the Lenten season. We come and we worship because we believe. 
People were fortified by Jesus' words and his deeds that revealed care for all, especially those marginalized. We are strengthened by our belief in the possibility for renewed health and vigor for all. This Lenten season, we'll be looking not only at our ancient word from scriptures, but also contemporary words from writers, from poets, from politicians even. This morning, we look at a word from Joseph Campbell, an American professor of contemporary mythology and comparative religion. It is by going down into the abyss that we recover the treasures of life. Where you stumble, there lies your treasure. And another quote from Matsona Daweo, true wisdom is like an ocean. The deeper you go, the greater treasures you'll find. And from our scripture, the gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched the leper saying, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the man's leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. That evening they brought to Jesus many who were possessed with demons and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we begin our Lenten season, we'll be reflecting on the healing narratives of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Through this season, we will be holding up images of brokenness and honoring the gifts that we have come to know, even in the midst of our difficult moments. Our gospel lesson invites us to think about what our communities offer to those in pain, those seeking healing and touch. How are we reaching out to people in pain? Are we acknowledging their suffering in our preaching and in our worship? What ways are we stigmatizing certain kinds of pain? How are we as a community of faith promoting physical health, wholeness and healing? Jesus' touch of the leper was an outrageous act. And by doing it, he signaled that these people likely a mixture of folks with everything from boils to simple eczema, were actually not outside the kingdom of God. Nor ought they be outside of the love of the community itself. They are family. They are worthy of touch and inclusion. Our gospel also invites us to consider the ways our communities exclude others. The boundaries that we may create the boundaries that were called to transcend. The leper was considered unclean. It does make sense that a community would fear a person with a skin disease. What if it was contagious? And communities create boundaries for good reasons, for self-preservation and to create a strong sense of identity and purpose. But the problem becomes when our boundaries go unchecked and unquestioned. Jesus did that in his time. He pushed boundaries. He questioned the traditions and the way things were the way they were. 
He crossed social boundaries in every way imaginable. And he teaches us that the boundaries we thought were helping us might actually be hurting us and hurting others. So in this difficult year, if we look back and look around our community, our community of faith, the collection of churches themselves, there have been many who have been missing. One of the things that has really made me distraught this year is that the only tangible way we had to connect with some people, especially from March to May last year, was in our worship online. And then by phone and by mail, we are a very touchy-feely Hampton United Church. And many of us long for that connection to be in each other's presence, to talk to one another, to get hugs, to have a friendly handshake or a pat on the back. So I thought often, is what we were doing enough to make us a community of faith? We are known for our, con our connection, especially in our worship gatherings. And now that our worship ways are restricted with only a few gathering in person, and we know that when we are in yellow or, or, or orange, when we gather, we still can't get too close. Do we have a sense that we are a connected community of faith? How can we feel that all are included and that all are welcome? I think about Vernon who went into the Dr. Snow Center as the pandemic was beginning, and Ethel, who's been there for a while. We would love to go and chat and connect with them and pray and offer our hearts, but how do we do that in the midst of our fears of the COVID disease? So this year, I think God has been calling us to choose to consider ways of including people, caring for people, and seeking to be a healing presence to people that may be absolutely unconventional. And that's actually the part of our gospel lesson this morning. We can feel some empathy with the man with leprosy. But I imagine that not many of us have gone through something so dramatic as to be completely socially isolated and exiled because of our physical appearance. Maybe some have experienced physical healing and reintegration into a community that you may have been shunned. So as this man was healed by Jesus, and Jesus told him to go back to the priest. Can you imagine the feeling of that man as he started back towards the temple? That worshiping community that he had once attended, been part of, belonged. That worshiping community that had shunned him or exiled him that worshiping community, despite its shortcomings, must have offered something to this child of God that he could not find somewhere else for him to desire a return to that place. So in this past year, where we have had to figure out a different way to worship, maybe different things on Sunday mornings that we call worship, but not coming into our worship space. What hope and belonging have you experienced during this time of isolation from our physical community of faith? And what is it that brings you back into this time of gathering, whether it's Sunday morning here in this building or Sunday morning on Zoom, or later, Sunday or during the week, through YouTube. What is it 
about this time, this place, this gathering that makes you want to return. The words of Jesus that we heard from the gospel, the healing story, were, I do choose. And he says to the man, be made clean. So faced with a request and given the choice, Jesus chooses to say yes. And he says yes to each precious and treasured life. Recovered wholeness is offered to everyone and will look different for each one of us. So during this Lenten season, we will be invited to examine wholeness that can be created or recreated in the midst of the brokenness we might be experiencing. Our whole world has been experiencing the brokenness of a global pandemic. And we are being called in this time to examine how the places of brokenness can be brought together to create something new, something unique. And maybe something will be created that can make each of us and our community of faith stronger because of the brokenness we have known. During this Lenten season, we will be focusing on the image of beach glass and pieces of broken tile or pottery. As I said earlier, beach glass begins as something whole and yet discarded. And as it is tumbled by the sea, it is broken and polished until it becomes a treasure. That's a treasure that I filled my late spring and summer with. John and I explored many beaches and the buckets that I carried <laughs> collected so many pieces of sea glass just from our region here. And then thinking that that idea of something that was whole and broken can be treasured again. That's something that we need to hold on to as we consider that suffering is a natural part of our human existence. Pain comes and brokenness enters our lives. Yet Jesus reaches out to touch us and to remind us of the treasure that we are all worthy. We are all worthy of new life in the midst of hopelessness. So in this year of this pandemic, let us find ways to intentionally affirm our journey to wholeness, to physical health, to spiritual health, to the health of our community, to the health of our systems and the health of our world. Today in our worship, we focus on broken bread, broken bread that nourishes us, a story of God's love made real in the form of one just like us, a human with family and friends, with purpose and pain, with hope and with despair. And in these Lenten weeks, we will follow the story of love in brokenness and betrayal, wonder and warning, hopelessness and hallelujahs. We know from the story of Jesus, out of perfection, nothing can be made. So we move into this sacrament, understanding that there is brokenness in God's love and grace in that broken bread and wholeness brought to us through that grace and that love. Another quote from Joseph Campbell, an American professor of comparative mythology and comparative religion. He says, every process involves breaking something up. The earth must be broken to bring forth life. If the seed does not die, there is no plant. Bread results from the death of wheat. Life lives on lives. 
Our own life lives on the acts of other people. If you are life worthy, you will experience brokenness and you can take it. So may this season of Lent allow us to examine our own brokenness, the brokenness of our familiar ways and traditions, the brokenness of our world and the systems that enable brokenness to continue. May our reflections allow us the honest and faith-filled space to find new ways of putting what we treasure into a new picture where wholeness for all emerges from those broken pieces. Amen and amen. People who were healed by Jesus were not afraid to ask. And so we come before the Holy One, making our petitions and desires known and trusting the work of the Spirit. Our offerings, the gift that we share with the church, spark mission and ministry in our congregation and beyond each of us and beyond these walls to serve. So with that spark of hope, may we give as we are able to enable the abundance of God's grace to transform what we offer to responses of hope and justice for the world. Our morning offering will now be received. Let us pray. Loving God, we open our hearts wide to share the good news in action and commitment. May these gifts be transformed into caring visits to those who are lonely and hurting, learning times with young and old, and faith-filled worship for all seekers. May outreach be possible and love be imaginable. Let these offerings spark our spirits and our imaginations. And we offer these gifts and thanksgiving for the blessings we have received. Amen. Our communion hymn is Come Touch Our Hearts.
table of the one God. It does not belong to Hampton United or to the United Church of Canada, but to God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, who works in us and others by the spirit. And so all who seek to share in God's abundance and who strive to live in God's way, all are welcome here. Come, Come and taste the grace eternal. Come and see that God is good. Our God is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our God of grace. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, O God. In the beginning, you created life into raw materials, entering and animating containers of beauty and goodness. We, God, are your holy vessels, fired in the kiln of love until we shined with your light. Susceptible to shattering, we find ourselves broken unable at times to remember your promise of repair. You remind us this time and again that though broken, we are held in your presence and made whole by your grace. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, holy vessel of divine presence on earth. Your spirit anointed him as a container of grace in the form of a human. Preaching good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, setting at liberty those who were oppressed and announcing that time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, he fed the hungry and ate with those considered too broken for company. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to the path of healing and recovery. You, God, delivered us from our despair and isolation and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. When Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. We are not alone. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant 
poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of the healing, life-transforming acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. May they be for us your healing spirit through Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, healing agents in a broken world, offering the lifeblood of hope. By your spirit, God, make us one with Christ, one with one another, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again and we feast at his heavenly banquet. We gather our hearts together in prayer. Healer of every ill, hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. As demolished pieces that are treasured when found, we trust that beauty from brokenness is possible when we seek to bind together that which is wounded. God, we pray especially for those who have experienced the physical loss of family and friends during this pandemic and for those who are still suffering the consequences of the illness. We pray for each person who suffers in body in other ways, weariness from inactivity or weariness from overactivity and stress in this time. We pray for those whose treatment of maladies have been put on hold and those who suffer isolation in their illness, whatever the cause. God, we pray grateful thanks for the medical staff everywhere around the world who have shown unbelievable strength and stamina. And we mourn the demise of too many caregivers who risk their lives for our sake. We come to you, God, our healer and comforter. We call out to you, God, our mother and peacemaker. We pray as Jesus taught us to pray to you. He cried out, Abba, and we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The bread we break is the bread of life, food for the journey. The fruit of the vine which we consume and which we pour out. Is the cup of love sustaining us on the way. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In this time together, whether here in person or whether at home, I invite you to share in the grace given to us. And let us pray together. God of the table, 
for the bread we have eaten, for the fruit of the vine that has nourished us. We have tasted your goodness. Grant that the meal we have shared here today will fill our hearts with hope. May the fellowship we share today fill our hearts with love. May the worship we share today fill our souls with you. And as we go out, may we carry Christ to friend and stranger. Amen. Scripture accounts of healing often end with responses from the crowd of witnesses. As we go out, how will we proceed into the brokenness of this world and respond as the body of Christ? Let us be reminded in our closing hymn that Jesus' hands were kind hands. Now let us go with confidence as treasures of God, recovering our depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. I do choose you. And may the spirit hover, move and deliver healing to our soul and add a spring in our step. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and go with us all this day and forevermore. Amen.